I watched with pride as you grew into a weapon of righteousness. The storyline of Arthas is probably the most heartbreaking part of lore in Warcraft. The backstory behind Wrath of the Lich King in summary is, Arthas is a handsome, strong paladin who someday is going to rule. His father, the king, has told him that he is destined for great things. And when Arthas seeks out the evil Malganus and after becomes familiar with the mighty weapon Frostmourne, in the end, it corrupts his soul and causes him to become the Lich King. Now, why is all this important? Because it's an expansion, and this one has a great backstory. Your level cap in Wrath of the Lich King is now level 80. There's a whole new world to go to in the land of Northrend. In this expansion, I really got more into leveling my crafts. Now, playing as Alliance, the first area I normally went to was straight in the Borean Tundra. Here you can quest at different areas and do the quest that follows to advance in your Warcraft leveling. I really love all the dungeons from this expansion. From the Nexus to the later released Halls of Reflection, all of these dungeons provide an awesome assortment of mini bosses and items to help you do more damage, more healing, and have more health in your quest to be level 80. When Lich King first came out, there were tons of imbalances with classes, and this is probably due to the release of the new class called the Death Knight. Now any race in the game could be a Death Knight, and this is simply a character that starts out at level 55, and you have your own custom starting area. These characters are followers of the Lich King, but as you play as one, you realize this class is very overpowered. As far as raiding in Lich King, oh my god, where can I start? I spent countless hours with the guild I was in during this expansion, just raiding every night. This expansion has so much content in it, and was great for exploration, and by far interesting with its storyline. Also, the best part was the new achievements that you were able to get. The achievement system, still to this day, is one of the best things to hit the World of Warcraft, along with the other titles you can receive from such achievements. I mean, you're only cool if you have a Champion of the Frozen Waste title. Another awesome feature in this expansion is the new pets and vanity items that you can get through Quest and Gold. I still wish, though, that I would have gotten the collector's edition when I ordered my copy, so I could have my very own Frosty pet. Yet, all in all, you can still get so much out of this, even if you're pretty much just passing through with this not being the new expansion out. A really nice feature before Cataclysm was ever out was the ability to gain rep from doing various things instead of just farming cloths and whatnot. Just wearing a tabard in a dungeon got you rep with the best factions who gave you items to upgrade yourself with while leveling. Real quick though, I almost feel like I've cheated those of you who are PvP players. Now PvP in any game stands for player versus player, and the basic goal of this is to defeat the people you're up against. Now in Wrath, you can still have either a 2s, 3s, or 5s team. But now with the new city of Dalaran, you're given the sewers to go to and set arena matches up in. And you were also given the area of Wintergrass, where you could have a giant PvP match that took place, incorporating strategies within it. Even though Cataclysm is the newest World of Warcraft expansion, if you plan on playing through, please try and find a group to get together and do the Ice Crown Citadel. Learning the ending to Arthas is the perfect closing to a great expansion leading into a new adventure. I promise. Ice. 